was thinking, but in the meantime, I feel like we all just need a boost, especially for the entrepreneurs or the people who have their own business or are trying to maintain their business. Let's just get right into a little bit of this. So as it goes, Marlene, since you haven't seen um, the Prosperous Thinking Workshops, I'll say the affirmation and then we as a group will say it the second time around. And you don't have to unmute your mic, but just to sort of, you know, put some armor on um, right. in the world of affirmation. So my words are charged with prospering power. Together, my words are charged with prospering power. My work makes a difference. Together, my work makes a difference. I love the freedom my business produces for me. Together, I love the freedom my business produces for me. Money and wealth come easy for me. Together, money and wealth come easy for me. All right, so let's take a deep breath on this next one. Inhale through your nose. Hold it for about three or four counts and exhale slowly through your mouth. And let's really get into this next one here. My income grows daily by me doing things I love and enjoy. All right, I'm gonna pick on one person who I, I probably always pick on her, Angela. Go ahead and give us three things you're grateful for right now off the top of your head. I'm grateful for clarity mm -hmm. and the support I have with my family and friends and um, this group today honestly i always have a good time and i'm always in a better place afterwards so i'm grateful for that awesome our next affirmation y'all let's get ready all my goals are manifesting with ease all together all my goals are manifesting with ease next one i work when i want where i want with people i want to work with all together i work when i want where I want, with people I want to work with. Next up, I am surrounded by people who love, respect, and support me. All together, I am surrounded by people who love, respect, and support me. Five more, guys. I enjoy multiple streams of income. All together, I enjoy multiple streams of income. Next one, go ahead, I'm gonna call on Seisha. Seisha, tell us three people you're grateful for in your life right now. Uh, I'm grateful for myself, <laughs> for mom. <laughs> no. I'm, Who brought I'm her? <laughs> no, I'm grateful for, uh, definitely my mom. I'm definitely grateful for my sister because she reminded me about this class today and I needed this and Ooh, I'm grateful for my brother because he's been my support system these last 30 days. Nice. All right. All right, y'all. Three more. I am confident in my ability to create wealth altogether. I am confident in my ability to create wealth. I am worthy of financial security altogether. I am worthy of financial security. Last one. I invest in myself and my creative projects every day. All together, I invest in myself and my creative projects every day. Ashe, Ashe. It looks like we just created some entrepreneurs, but we at least we, we put some gas in the car for the entrepreneurs that are already clear about what they want to do. Diane, can I say I really needed that last one? My cousin brought to my attention that we will work for these millionaires, but we're not working towards our millions like mm -hmm. you'll put in eight hours at a job and completely forget all your side projects because you're so overwhelmed with that shit that like mm -hmm. it's nice to be reminded like i need to put something into creativity every day that's it just for me that's it and something you want to you want to reap the rewards from right so into the depths um before we we go around does anyone not know where scorpio falls in their birth chart i'm assuming everyone say do you know where scorpio falls for you Mm, no. Okay, let's just real quick. All right, so you have a 11th house by whole signs, okay? And they're just important because your midheaven is in Scorpio, just like Marlene, we just mentioned, her midheaven is in Scorpio. So that's your career point, all right? When you get to the 10th house stuff and the career stuff, pay attention to that because it's going to help you sort of break down 
what the long term, what you want to be recognized for. Um, all right. Any questions about the uh, any maybe even just the eclipse or anything on anyone's mind before we jump into this is we're going to blow like breeze through it. All right, let's rock and roll. So Scorpio is October 23rd to November 21st. Typically, this is a fixed water sign, right? So it's symbolized by ice, a deep well, water processing and filtration, terror, magnetism. This is the attraction and repulsion at the same time. This is probing beyond the surface. This is power and control. Uh, Scorpio people, I know Angela and Sasha have their mothers of Scorpio rising. Um, does anyone have like Scorpio sun people in their life or, you know, let me let somebody in here. I do. Yes. Is that Marlene? It is. You do, do you have, who, who are your Scorpio people? <laughs> My Carmen is in and out. Um, old girlfriend from college, old bestie, yeah. and one other friend. What, what is one trait you would say about them for sure? As a, as, you said, what would I say about them? Yeah, like one, a couple of traits or something you might say about their personalities. Uh, willful. Um, let them figure it out. I mean, support them, but don't <laughs> assist. Make sure you don't take over. Mm -hmm. Seem fairly confident. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a power, there's a control. One thing I know for sure is you can know a Scorpio for 15 years and not know they have a sister or a brother. They, they're very need to know type of sign uh, and keep it, you know, low. Um, they say Taurus is a well-behaved Scorpio because they can also keep the secrets and be, be still and be quiet about things. Um, Scorpio on, let's say they had a Facebook page, they have the same picture up from 2013 and they barely post any pictures of themselves, but they're watching everything. They know what everyone else got going on. These are the investigators of the Zodiac. All right. It uh, looks like some one person just joined us. Welcome. Um, Cantrell, is that how you say it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's going on? Do you know where Scorpio falls in your birth chart? Uh, not exactly. Okay. Um, I can, do you want me to cast your chart and tell you or you just yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. All right, it. we'll do this. Let's just take a second, y'all. All right, let me go back. Hold on a second. There it is. All right. So I think I'm gonna have to add. Do you know your birth time? Uh well, it's um my birth date is the first of November. Okay. But do you but do you happen to know the 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 time? Because that's the only way I'll be able to tell you what house it is anyway. Oh, yeah, I'm not sure on that part. Okay, well then d disregard, um, but welcome either way and happy birthday, Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we'll just, we'll just keep rolling. And then um, when you, if you do in the future, get your birth time, we'll be able to give you a little more information. All okay. right, so Scorpio into the magic. So coming out of Libra season, the seventh sign is Libra, right? Libra is the diplomat, the politician. Um, coming out of Libra, we've been polite maybe like on the surface glossed over what what it really is perhaps too polite we avoided the murky reality of what lies beneath the surface scorpio opens the way for passion and intensity allowing us to feel our way around in the dark scorpio is magnetic and powerful our survival instincts kick in wherever scorpio falls in your birth chart this is where your your will to survive and test rather your survival uh, this is where the phoenix rises from the ashes by any means necessary. So Scorpio is ruled by Pluto in modern astrology and ruled by Mars in traditional astrology. So into the mystery, I am that I destroy and I transform. Down in the cellar of doubts, you empty each day, vanquishing the cobwebs of your past and restoring truth, immunizing old hurts and resentments, purifying intuition with desire and passion, releasing all control, to your inner being, discarding any power misused. You are transformed by choice. So choose wisely who you will serve. Um, Scorpio tends to brood and hold on to things like kind of similar to how cancer does, take it to the grave and just like, you know, as a water sign, they will get deeply emotionally invested and hurt very, um, you know, heavily about things and hold on to it. And sometimes in the plot their revenge and paranoia, sometimes Scorpios tend to do that. 
um, but it's just a mysterious sign of very layered and complex. So who are you, Scorpio? This applies to Scorpio rising, Scorpio sun, Scorpio moon, especially. Layered, complex, mysterious, magical, sexual, magnetic, controlling, investigative, hiding, hiding decaying, um, obsession with death and dying. Um, as, as children, Scorpios might you know, want, want to know a lot, whole lot about death, ask all the questions about death. Um, Ambry, I know, I think uh, your son is a Scorpio. Um, is he sort of like, you know, uh, very investigative and inquisitive about that stuff? Yes, very. Um, I just kind of threw out the idea of him, you know, trying to shelter him because he's always coming to me with crazy questions. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, with Scorpio children, you got to like, have the the special browser on there so they're not Google searching certain things because it, it gets deep. Um, I have a, a client who her her son's a Scorpio rising and she's like he came to me with all this stuff about Wicca. I don't and he's only nine years old. I don't even know where he learned this stuff, but he's like Google, you know. And so they just need to know things and they need to get as much information as possible. And then they won't say anything right away. They like hold it for the right time, which is really interesting. Um, Amber Rose, I think her name is, has her son, Sebastian's a Scorpio, and there was a picture of him at like four or five years old, and he wanted a real live like, skeleton that you have in the doctor's offices. That's what he wanted. He's all into spiders and tarantulas, everything. That's Scorpio energy, right? So they are researching, regenerating, transforming, salvaging, healing, the psychologist, the one unpacking trauma, unafraid of the sewage, the one who rises to power. You can, Scorpio will keep your secrets. They'll hold the heaviest stuff. You can tell them they, you know, and they know where to put it. Um, so Mars and Pluto in harmonics. Harmonics is a form of astrology where the birth chart is like divided by division through like the two-ness, the three-ness, through the trines, the sextiles, the oppositions. It's a complex system, but it also correlates to like music and, and how the musical notes and astrology tie in. I think, Ambria, eventually you'll, you'll probably get into harmonics. It's in a very Aquarian form of astrology. But anyway, in harmonics, Mars represents internally the process of our will. So wherever Mars is in your birth chart, this is the process of deciding on goals and summoning energy to go out and achieve them. Externally, it represents the actions by which we seek to achieve our goals. And this includes the process of attempting to bend other people to our will the process of persuasion by power or force. Um, but also Mars seems to include sheer expenditure of physical energy and the process of trying to impress other people through physical display. Now, Pluto, the other planet that rules Scorpio is the principle of dedication and single-mindedness. Expressed as a moral principle, Pluto says, whatever I have decided to achieve, I must not, I must not rest until I achieve it. I must be totally ruthless with myself in forcing myself onwards and also totally ruthless and uncompromising in my dealings with the outside world. At all costs, I must avoid apathy and inertia. So these two planets, when they come together, um, this is why Scorpio is such a layered sign, just like Aquarius is ruled by Saturn and Uranus, right? It's a very layered, deep, fixed sign, and you cannot just look at one the one planet and get an accurate depiction of these people. You have to look at both planets when you have a Scorpio rising person because they're going to be complex and they're going to be pulling energy from those two planets in their chart to kind of make up that chart ruler. Um, so yeah, just trust that whatever is going on behind the Scorpio stare is not really what you think. Just allow them their, <laughs> their brooding process. Uh, let me check the chat real quick. Cool. Oh, Angela, you got to Yeah, you. I think you have a stellium in Scorpio. So there's, um, you know, some intensity there. Scorpio is all or nothing. You know, it is. There's no in between. So the sun in Scorpio celebrities, Gabe, Gabriel Union, Drake, Sierra, Diddy, Will Smith. Well, excuse me, Willow, not Will. <laughs> Willow Smith. You can tell that Will is the Libra and Willow is into like the goth dark stuff at some points um, before she started to become more Sagittarian in nature. Uh, Tracy Ellis Ross, um, uh, Alfred Woodward, Dorothy Dandridge, Miguel, Whoopi Goldberg, and Ruby D. Ruby Goldberg is probably my favorite. Uh, Scorpio, she's the one who was like, when they asked her her thoughts on marriage, she said, I don't want somebody up in my house. She's very private, secretive, and doesn't really have time for um, anyone probing, especially with the press, into her personal life. Uh, the purpose for the sun in Scorpio is to develop resilience. There's often a story of survival against the odds and your solar gold is the inner fortitude this brings. 
The journey for you may be to dive into the depths, gaining inner strength through weathering tough conditions and emerging transform. I one time we did a, a meetup at my the clubhouse at my old um, complex here. It was like probably three years ago, and this person came to the meetup and she was like a stellium in Scorpio, Scorpio sign too, and. She, everyone else had their birth chart in front of them. I printed it out before the session. I gave them everything they needed. And she's all like, I, I, I don't know why you need my birth information. Like you, you know, you could do a lot with that. And I'm thinking like, <laughs> you came to an astrology meetup. Well, <laughs> what do you think I want to do with that? Um, you know, it's like the people who think the CIA or something is listening to them through Alexa. I'm sure there's nobody in a bunker in the middle of Iowa listening to you talk about whatever in your house, like, it's not that deep. So sometimes Scorpio can get wrapped into the paranoia. And instead of like, just enjoying the process, everyone isn't out to get you. But that's the scorpion stinger is like thinking that some things could be wrong in this process. And it's not, you know, but that I guess that's a part of the digging, right? So moon and Scorpio celebrity, Beyonce, you know, not, not surprisingly, actually, um, the emotions tend to run deep and holding on to hurts can at times be destructive. Tough physical exercise can be a way to discharge feelings. Um, this song, I don't even know what the name of the song is. Angela, do you know would she be rocking chinchilla coats if I let you go? No, I don't know that song. What? Okay. Aren't you like Beyonce fan? It's like she gonna be rocking chinchilla coats if I let you go in the house off the coast if I let you go. She gonna take everything I own if I let you go. I can't let you go. Damn, if I let you go. It's just like, symbolically ring the, ring the alarm ring the alarm thank you <laughs> i forgot totally scorpionic in nature like i you know i might not even want you no more but i'm definitely not gonna let nobody else have you because i have invested in this and i'm gonna get my return on my investment scorpio and taurus are the signs of investment that's the polarity of values and valuables and all that so I wasn't surprised through those lyrics. All right, next uh, next planet in Scorpio is Mercury. Mercury in Scorpio is the probing mind of the detective, researching deeply and sensing motivations. You have the courage to voice things that no one else does. Mercury is the planet, the messenger planet, our mind, our thinking, our writing, our speaking style. These people would love a little secret. They'd love to keep a hidden notebook and stuff like that, but they'd also love to get to the bottom of things and tell everyone about what they've discovered. All right, Venus and Scorpio. This is power plays and transformation in love. Venus is the planet of love and desire. This is our objects of affection. So it can be dramatic changes in love, hidden and mysterious love life, the need to know about their partner, all or nothing, a feeling of betrayal or secrets kept can completely transform love to hate, abstinence and extreme sexual self-control, um, relationship is passionate, is a passionate affair and perhaps a vehicle for powerful transformation. Trust will be important for you for when you fall, you fall deeply. What's wild is when I, I was looking up love, a thin line between love and hate, I just Googled the image. This tattoo came up and I completely forgot when I was 21, 22 years old, I got a similar love, hate tattoo on my inner uh, forearm that I don't even remember. I have sometimes, but I have Venus and Scorpio extremes in relationships so this is mars and scorpio when i thought of mars and scorpio i thought of the squid game i don't know if everyone's seen that on netflix kind of gory but um does the i don't want to ruin the, the, it so spoiler alert the scene on the bridge the glass bridge where uh he held she held the guy tight and was like i told you i would get you basically and then just jumped off the edge that is, is straight up mars and scorpio Mars and Scorpio can endure and survive the most extreme circumstances. They act co covertly, but the scorpion sting awaits anyone who crosses the line. Um, at a astrology event, I met someone with Mars and Scorpio back in like 2015, and they mentioned that they had extreme orgasms when they experiment with coffee enemas. I don't know nothing about it, but that sounds very Mars and Scorpio to me that the need to have the next thrill, the next high, the next like close, you know, climax as the French call the little death, la petite uh, mordir, uh, what is it, la petite mort, yeah, the little death. And so the need to like take it to the next level will be Mars and Scorpio. All right, Jupiter, the planet of expansion, travel, philosophy, religion, the guru planet in Scorpio, um, learning or travel can never be superficial, right? So they're passionate about what they believe, 
making it difficult to persuade otherwise. I thought of extreme travel, travel to research, travel to investigate, studying psychology, economics, revival marketing, because Scorpio knows how to repurpose and transform what is dying. So these are the people that can re, you know, transform a business, a brand, and transform your, your money. And uh, one of the guys who talked to the group, the financial advisor, Thomas, um, who works with Merrill Lynch or whatever, he came in to talk to the group at the start of the pandemic. He has a stellium in Scorpio. He owned a nightclub, has had a million dollar business, and now he invests all his time and energy into helping people transform their finances. Um, I also thought of people who study psychology and economics and the death doula uh, work as well would fall under there. Also mortuary science. Uh, Saturn in Scorpio. Saturn is our is the planet of what? Responsibility, discipline, restriction, hardship. This is where you, you sort of have to put in work. Um, and Saturn can focus on control, Scorpio's passion, and your sense of authority may therefore come from stoically weathering crisis and grit, status and drive to prove survival. So this also can apply to people with like, uh, what is it called? The midheaven in Scorpio. A couple of y'all have that on this, um, where y'all will force yourself into extreme conditions in your work environment or to, you know, to prove that you have survived something or you can survive something just this need to like, to really struggle and suffer. Um, and so say you came out on the other side alive or like almost feeling like your career is almost life and death sometimes, like intensity around the career. Um, all right, Scorpio in the first house, I'm just gonna summarize, you know, some of this, we're not gonna go through it. We don't have anyone here with the Scorpio ascendant, but this is the, these are the people that have that, that stare where you watching them at a party and they go from smiling to all of a sudden like a serious look, the serious stare. So I don't know <laughs> if you have, you know, if you experience that with the people in your life who have Scorpio rising, but you always want to know what's going on behind there. Um, they're reading the room, they're reading people's mannerisms, they're they're probing, they're looking behind, and they're very skeptical of things. Um, they don't really like photos taken of them unless they are absolutely prepared and it has to be their idea. Uh, so never sneak a picture of a Scorpio. They feel almost like you have like, you know, molested them in a way, like you've taken something from them that's sacred. Um, they can be, uh, sometimes there can be an obsession with how they look or how they don't look. Um, and they might make people uncomfortable because Scorpio has that feeling of intensity when they walk into a room, Scorpio rising, and everyone just feels their presence. And you can either be having a good time or you can kill the whole party because your mood is that intense. Um, Angela, do you want to add anything to Scorpio rising, you know, energy or people in your life? So if you're at this party with them and they get quiet when they get in the car, they're going to have a list of things everybody was doing wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, that upset them, right? Oh, and did you see her do this? Like, no, I didn't, crazy. <laughs> yeah, they're noticing like everything and thinking that someone has a motive or an angle. Um, so interesting. Uh, how about you, uh, Sasha? Anything you want to add to Scorpio rising people? Sorry, it took me a long time to figure out where the mic was. Now I don't even really know a whole lot about uh, Scorpio rising people. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here, but that's why I'm here to learn. Okay, cool. Well, um, these people are definitely the, they, the spy, detective, investigator. They want to find out about the people in your life to tell you about it. This is the person you hire, <laughs> even if they're in the family, to find out about your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or whomever. And they're going to just read the person and try to give you information. And sometimes it's not necessarily positive, but it is going to transform your how you look at it, or how you look at that person. All right, Scorpio in the second house. Hmm? Connected to Doc because I know a Libra with Scorpio rising, and my God, he is like that. He comes in the room, he doesn't say anything, but he knows what's going on, and he seems paranoid. I I never thought about that. Yeah, the the rising so, sign is is the the doorway to the chart. So a lot of people are like, oh, my sun sign is this, and my my you know whatever, and they don't realize if you were reading horoscopes, they're written from the from the perspective of the rising sign. So that person is more Scorpio than he is Libra, actually. Um, 
So the second house of earned income, self-worth, possessions, we talked a little bit about that through Venus. Uh, the, when you have Scorpio in the second house, there can be an intensity around your finances and financial security. It can go through like the, the like we say, the all or nothing extremes with finances. Um, they can also, these are the people that can make money off of one man's trash as another man's trash, repurposing items, collecting things. Uh, they might have a collection of things associated to the occult, erotica, collecting sex toys and stuff like that. They might be all into that kind of stuff. Um, but they love their money such as circumstances to be secret and don't want nobody to know about it. All right, this is the image I thought of with Scorpio rising. The These potato graters are uh, turned into lights, something Scorpio, I mean, excuse me, Scorpio second house people would do. They You drop them off in the thrift store and they are going to find something they can turn and repurpose and reuse and make it really cool, unique. What you thought was trash, they see something else. All right, the third house of our communication, writing, speaking style, right? Learning the natural uh, house of Gemini. Having Scorpio here can make someone have the mind of a detective, right? This is the the person who can be into like hunting, getting all the secret, everyone's secrets of the, the, this is the house of siblings and neighbors day to day. This is the third house is also the house of your bestie in traditional astrology, because that person is considered to be like a sibling. So, you know, it's in engaging people on a deep level and, and intensity and passion, routine interactions with other people. So um, most, a lot of times when you see Scorpio in the third house, these people, they like to, like a cat will play with a mouse, irritate you mentally just to get a rise out of you, to see how extreme you will go or how angry you can get. Um, all right, I thought of the, the, the twin, the strange silent twins. There's a, a huge story about them. One of, one of the twins, how they passed away, um, you can find it online, but this is definitely that third house energy of, you, it's not what you think. And matter of fact, don't go thinking too much because I'm hiding it anyway in a place you'll never look. So it's just like the best kept secrets, third house Scorpio. All right, the fourth house of home, family, roots, heritage. This is a natural house of cancer. There can be control around a parent or a parent figure, like, you know, where they are obsessed with you, with you and your life or, or the opposite. Maybe it's you and your obsession with your parent. Um, they're, the privacy of these people the fourth house is our real estate, right? I talked to you guys about Ikea. And if you were in Ikea, what kind of things would you buy? Scorpio is looking for the best uh, um, lock system, locking mechanism, the best um, security cameras and everything, things to make them feel like they're inside of a, a secure castle and nothing can get in there. They might hide keys, uh, the, the spare key for the house in a place that no one will know or, you know, just going to the next level to make sure their house is, is feeling safe and secure. These people will not, they will cuss you off or open in the blinds in their house. I can tell you that right now. Um, they might have a heavy, heavy gate. And as far as the color scheme in the home, it's going to be dark and it's going to be like, you know, just like you would find a scorpion in a cave or a snake or something in a cave, dark, almost feeling kind of gloomy energy, but it's just more so it feels protective to them, uh, like a bat cave kind of. And this, these are the images I thought of, you know, the family celebrating Halloween and then the, the It movie, A Haunted House, would also kind of feel like Scorpio too. You might have a parent who is a psychologist or feels like they are. Um, so Scorpio in the fifth house of children, creativity, new romance, fun, you know, the playful side. Uh, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna throw some of y'all in here just so we can blast through this and I know a couple of y'all have been studying. So I'm gonna throw Angel Ambria in here. Ambria, Scorpio in the fifth house. Can you kind of give me some impressions or images, things you might think of? Um, first thing that comes to mind is like intense romances mm -hmm. and probably really um, deep not deep artists but like artists who are really intense yeah. on the stage or something like that totally so if if this was uh, also like gambling or a casino and you have scorpio in the fifth house what kind of gambler or speculative personality uh -oh, would like that be? a compulsive gambler <laughs> like yeah. someone who might 
be taken away by gambling as yeah. in like obsessed with it this this they could go to the the deep end of you know maybe putting the house up you know for again like that kind of extreme risk with it with gambling can go all the way to the end and just come back around because they know they'll get it back right so it's a win and then a loss and then they know they'll win it back um also uh, like these are also taboo romance romantic affairs like these are the people who they might have a fake tinder profile or whatever dating profile with a fake face and everything like really discreet and and you know taboo about the way in which they date and find new romance but thank you for sharing Amber. these are some of the images i came up with the secret romance erotic art uh this is phil ivy he's a second richest poker player he made 100 million playing poker uh, and he was formerly number one before his divorce and then having fearless children obviously this is photoshop but these are the kind of kids who they're in the backyard playing and they come to you with a snake they found or something and you're terrified but they are not uh scorpio in the sixth house of our daily routines and our work uh angela what kind of work environment do you think would put scorpio in the sixth what kind of co-workers too Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, so sixth house, um, probably someone who works in some kind of health situation, like maybe even like sex health, right? Because like Virgo is healthy and Scorpio is like sex, power, secrets, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> so maybe like a sex health operate or not operator that sounds bad <laughs> like, like a sex health teacher yeah. or um even like a sex health therapist like mm -hmm. someone who could help couples along i feel like that would be in that area homeopathic ideas um oh, and just yeah. kind of like like oh what's the word um coma sutra yeah and tantric work is probably right there like that's i read that will smith like visited this place like 14 times while he's on a break with um jada or whatever mm -hmm. and it i don't know that's the kind of place i would think it is totally these are these are the the person who in the workplace has the, the co-workers bring all their secrets to them right they know what's going on they there may be like sexual involvement in the workplace um, this is when you mentioned homeopathic health, these are the, the people who make the yoni steams and the, the womb care people and all that. Um, this is as far as the sixth house of pets and uh, domestic animals. These are going to be your, your creepy exotic animals like the tarantulas, the rats, the bats, the alligators, etc. Um, this is also animal hospice care. Um, the sixth house is the house of health. So we're talking about the sexual reproductive health. We're talking about the body's ability to eliminate waste and detox. And we're talking about binging and purging. So all that, that whole process there would be sixth house Scorpio. But Angela, good job. I see you've been doing some studying. You sound really confident. I love it. Um, I thought of this, how your supervisor watches you at work. This would be you doing the work in the supervisor uh, and unknowingly recording your keystrokes and everything. That would be the sixth house feeling. Um, we talked about waste and waste management, that would be sixth house workers as well. Colon hydrotherapy would be a way to, for healing and, and having a routine for your healthcare. And then again, small animals such as lizards and tarantulas and you see Michael Jackson with his python or his boa. All right, so Scorpio in the seventh house of partnership, relationship, marriage. Let me see who we got on here. I know Marlene, can you, um, can you chime in? I don't know if you're familiar. I think you are enough familiar enough with Scorpio in the seventh house. Can you tell us a little bit about what it would be like in the house of marriage and partnership? Oh my goodness. I wish I could. I'm not. The only thing my point of reference would be <laughs> Oh, that's my okay. Libra friend would be rising. So I'm okay. not sure how that would change. That's so a, I'm not sure how that would change. So this is the the uh, a partner who there can be possessiveness in the partnership controlling energy this is the uh you know a, a partner who is like there's just extremes around everything that's going on um we think about the natural house of libra right so all the the business dealings and having contracts 
uh, Ambria, excuse me, what type of contract would be a Scorpio contract? Uh, sorry, I'm eating a cupcake. Um, probably something dealing, uh, I'm not sure. You said what type of contract would be? A Scorpio contract. So uh, seventh house is money. the natural house of contract. Yep. So it's money, but what kind of of business dealing would that be? Uh, I don't know. I don't think socks. You don't do contracts for that, like deeds or um, more more I'm energetic. Not sure. Okay, no worries. Oh, more, more energetic. Energetic contracts between people, like yeah. a. In, uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, so between two people, if, if the seventh house is the natural house of, of contracts and the art of relating to other people, Scorpio would be deep, like transformational contracts. This is something that where you all sign the dotted line and it's going to transform each other's lives, is what I, I would say. Um, so these are some images. I was thinking Christian Gray contracts, so I was way off base. Yeah, that too, because, you know, like you sign this and I basically you live at my house and this is what it is. And you do this and you do that. And this is what we own together and how we're going to do things. That would be Scorpio, but it would be too secretive, right? I love that idea of um, Fifty Shades of Grey. So I thought of um, the movie Us, just the parallels of having an underground version of yourself, the lower, a shadow side of yourself. And then um, I don't know why I included this. Maybe it was just a blindfold hidden mysterious area, you know, and then the marriage would be the seventh house. All right, the eighth house of sex transformation. This is the natural house of Scorpio. So what happens when Scorpio falls in your eighth house and it's the natural house? It does, it amplifies the interpretation of this placement. So this is the ability to completely transform yourself, profound work with the dying, an intense interest in death, an emotionally deep and complex person, excellent understanding of psychology. These are the psychologists. They can hide money from partners, intense curiosity about other people's transformations, intense curiosity about other people's money. They can hide other people's money. These are the people, the accountants and stuff that will hide your money from you so that you don't spend it as well. Um, intense curiosity about other people's sex lives. Uh, this can be deep interactions with others that test the ability to endure extreme emotional states, sexual ecstasy and ag agony. Um, this is like, the pain, painful uh, like nipple tassels or, and then having extreme orgasm at the same time and like pleasure and pain go hand in hand. Um, so a little bit of pain and a whole lot of pleasure, a whole lot of pain, a whole lot of pleasure like that. Debt is transformational for these people. Honestly, because this the eighth house is the house of death and how we, we, how we sort of revive ourselves, resuscitate ourselves. When these people are in debt or feel debt, they feel like there is a I'm buried under the ground energy. But when they eliminate or transform that debt, they it's like a whole new version of them that no one else got to see before. Um, they can they can seek greater and greater highs and lows to feel alive. Any activity that brings you to the edge or the brink of death. And the taboo of the taboo, there can be a deep emotional involvement in sex. And these are great finance researchers, sex researchers and stuff like that. Uh, power plays with money and shared resources. And it is it is once the other person is trusted with resources, it's like, oh, we all in. Like there's no, they, they won't, once they you know their secret, they won't let you go. You know, if you ever seen like kids on the playground and they're like, I don't want to talk to you no more. If if that person has told you their secrets and their Scorpio energy there, they're not going to let you go nowhere. They're like, oh, we friends for life. That's that's what it is. And that's what it's going to be. Um, the eighth house, again, image of therapy, psychotherapy, deep healing work within themselves. This is excellent for this placement. And then just having some sort of uh, strategize, strategize research. These people, if they research debt solution options and ways to transform their, you know, their debt or collective resources, even build or grow, it helps them to feel like they are on top of things. All right. The next one is the ninth house. We're pushing through, powering through, y'all. What time is it? Cool. All right. Fixed opinions about religion and culture. This is the natural house of Sagittarius. So these are going to be the extreme exploration like uh you know cults and all kinds of stuff secret religions um the gurus that are doing some dark heavy stuff 
this is like the the voodoo voodoo priest and the but it's like an extreme version of the baba lao and stuff like that where they want you to do all kinds of crazy sacrifice and just taking things to the next level whatever it is to make the first person, person feel as though they've transformed um in their philosophy is what it is the ninth house the ninth house is also higher learning so um just like earlier angela mentioned um, sexual homeopathic therapy, absolutely the desire to study that type of work would fall into the ninth house, even travel for um, like uh, Karma Sutra retreats and stuff, as she mentioned, would be the ninth house activity as well. But you might struggle with the idea of God with this placement or with the idea of something, you know, greater than what is or be obsessed with, you know, with, with death as a part of your religion. So these are some images I found, cults and extreme belief on a and &E. I've never seen it, but it, look, it looks interesting. And then these are like um, piercings um, by some uh, religious, uh, what do you call it, tradition. I'm, I don't even remember the name, I should have grabbed it. And this is beyond belief, the secret lives of women in extreme religions. And this, this got deep into, you know, some of the um, women within the Muslim faith who have to cover themselves from head to toe and you know, just their eyes are out and some of the extremes of getting acid poured on them and things like that in their countries are explored in this book. Um, all right, the 10th house, some of y'all have this, you have a midheaven in Capricorn, excuse me, a midheaven in Scorpio, this is for you. Um, Seisha has a midheaven in Scorpio and Capricorn and excuse me, Scorpio and so does Marlene and Reina. All right, this is your midheaven is your career point. It's your public, what you want to be recognized for publicly is called the top of the sky. All right, so this is like the wanting to be the, you know, the principal of the school. This is the person who needs to get to the higher level in their career or completely transform. They can also go from doing one thing and then extremely going the other way and doing another a couple of years later after they invested a lot of money and time and energy into one thing. They'll just turn the soil and say, no, I'm, I'm going to do this now. Um, this can be like the people in the workplace who everyone tells all the secrets to. And I think last year when we did Scorpio, Raina was mentioning all the servers that she manages, like tell her all her secrets and tell them all her secrets and stuff like that. Um, this can be work with demolition and repurposing. You people would make excellent like flipping houses and buying junk houses and to, you know demolition work with that. Um, these are the, the project managers, the, the head honcho, you know, uh, manager of an organization. You, well, you do well with managing other people's stuff. Um, it's also working in finance or working in debt uh, solution, debt recovery and all that stuff. Um, and I would also say to add just the career itself can feel like an extreme high and low point for you. Um, so did, have you, Marlene, in your career done major transformations from the start of your career to, you know, at different points? I'm in the process of doing so now. I will be starting a new job. I just got a new job, what, I got a job off the last Tuesday? So yeah, it's, 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 I'm at the genesis of it. Nice. Um, Y'all make excellent auditors too for any organization. Oh my God. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yeah, we can hear you. Hi. Yeah, we, we can hear you, Marlene. I get cut off. Yeah, I didn't know I was getting the call. I'm sorry if I got cut off. So yeah, I'm in the beginning um, of that. And it's very accurate for what you described. Oh, applicable for me anyway. And the other part about people telling me their secrets. Everybody at the job does that. <laughs> yeah because they know you're not going to react scorpio again has that poker face so you won't react and they can they feel like oh good this is where i can keep it um but like i, I was my last thing was just saying y'all make amazing auditors for any organization because y'all are gonna get to the bottom of where money is being mismanaged or and and hold be able to be like the financial sort of money keepers for the family too for some reason uh, people will tell you to hold this for me and hold that for me so I don't spend it and you won't spend it. You'll hold it for them. Um, all right. So let's go to the, someone was saying something and chimed in. You can go ahead and unmute your mic. Uh, 
these are different career. I just, just options. I just picked up of course, of course the list would go on forever, but just ideas, fraud examiners, auditors, life and death insurance agents, investment banking, morticians, funeral directors, largest shareholders, the CEO who answers, um, to who, who the, the C, who the CEO answers to, excuse me, the power behind the scenes. This is the confidant to the king or queen. This is colonics, waste management, the junkyard and scrap metal salesperson, the auto body collision repair person, renovations, gynecologists and urologists, infectious disease specialists, counselors and researchers. I have a client who has a midheaven in Scorpio and he, she does HIV AIDS um, uh, clinic work clinical research for HIV AIDS in the DC area. So that's very fitting for Scorpio. You have to look for where Mars falls in the person's chart to really, Pluto and Mars, to really get an idea of what they can do for a career. But it's gonna be deep, it's gonna be layered and nobody's really gonna know what they do. <laughs> that's just what it is. All right, Scorpio in the 11th house of friends, hopes, wishes. This is your group and groups and networking that you're a part of. Um, you can be trying to control your friends and, and have like passionate involvement with them. Um, causes on behalf of sexual freedom, crusading for sexual rights, uh, having friends that act like detectives, investigators, or spies. These are the, the group of girlfriends who have their own Instagram page and they all have the password for it so they can try to trap their, <laughs> their significant others and say, yeah, girl, I, I sent him a DM and he replied through our group thing. That, that would be <laughs> Scorpio in the 11th. Uh, this can be obsessive fans and occult clubs and private clubs or where you need a code to get in. It makes me think of the Masons and different secret societies um, and friends who have taboo hobbies and careers who that you don't even know what they do. So these are some, they go, you know, a Gungun ancestral so society, a uh, um, as an Afro-Cuban men's secret society, and the group is a mutual aid society known for elaborate street dances and very high expectations of the members to prioritize the group over their own families. The group has managed to stay mostly hidden for over a hundred years. They are, if you Google them, they're actually a real group and they, they do, it's like a mob boss mentality where you have, you're loyal to the, the gang or the group before you are to your own family. Um, activism falls in the 11th house. Think of Amber, uh, Amber Rose and I forget this woman's name. But you know they had their whole whole movement, and just uh, sex work is work would be that too. All right, and then lastly, the twelfth house. Uh, the, this is the house of our hidden dreams, our subconscious. This is the house of sleep and self sabotage and all the things that we don't have access to in the physical world. But it really is the escape hatch to the rest of the horoscope. So this is where you are charitable, compassionate. This is the house of prisons, ashrams, jails. Um, Scorpio in the 12th house, if it was a type of prison or place where people would be locked away from society, it would be like um, the Alcatraz, the on, on the island somewhere, Alcatraz, like having a prisoner in a place where no one could ever have access to them underneath the underneath. Um, this is a deeply paranoid person, can be obsessive and jealous, inwardly complex. Um, this person could work with inmates, the sick and institutionalized to create healing and transformation. Um, want to see people transform. Um, the Pisces is a natural 12th house. This is where you want to serve and, you know, sort of a sacrifice through service. And so you would want to see the transformation of people and healing of people people that no one else has to know about, you know, um, but these are the people who might do dream work or even if, and as far as dreams are concerned, this can be like people who like they dream about death or they, 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 uh, would daydream about the idea of life and death and stuff like that. And they're not really here presently in this world. They're always going to the intense place. Um, this could be a secret sleeping chamber. Uh, sleeping in total blackness, keeping a secret and dream journal, sexual meditation practices, and healing meditations. All right. And I thought of like, because the natural 12 houses would be like fantasy and, you know, Piscean film and stuff like that. I thought of Tales from the Hood would be cryptic film. Uh, this is an underwater cavern. Uh, and here's a quote, if we could read the secret history of our enemies, 
we should find in each man's life sorrow and suffering enough to disarm all hostility. The 12th house is where we transform our suffering. The 12th house is also the house of our hidden enemies. In translation, the hidden enemy is really yourself, your secret self, the version of you that you haven't addressed yet. That's the only reason that it's hidden or that is an enemy rather. All right, alchemy, the beliefs you hold in your heart about your self-control, your life. Write down a description of the new person you choose to be. Write down to the letter. Put yourself visually in your mind's eye in an environment that is conducive to the unfolding of this person. Exclude all other negative factors or rationalizing. A get out of your logical thought. Pay close attention to your inner conversations. Sift through the ashes daily. Face your demons. Rise reborn as the phoenix. So Marlene is going into a new job. And, and before you even go there, you send your messenger ahead of you by having an inner, inner conversation with someone at your new job saying, I love this new environment. I love my new job. I, I'm enjoying this. Um, that is a way to sort of get down to the, the letter by setting up a scene, an imaginary scene, and placing yourself in that position. And some of you all are familiar with that, you know, that practice. All right, any questions about anything before we jump into a quick woo clap? This is gonna be a fast one, a simple one. And I'm not gonna wait to you, for everyone to answer. We're just gonna run into it, jump right into it. But um, does anyone have questions? All right. Yeah, you did the moon, right? Would you say that? You did Scorpio moon, right? Yeah, I did. So remember Beyonce has moon in Scorpio? Um, it is the, yeah, it's the, the, the moon is our emotional needs, how we nurture ourselves and others. The moon can also be our, where we're comfortable, our home environment. Um, emotionally, you, you like to have your, your life private, you know, to, to be able to feel as though, you know, there's things that people don't know about you and you see them every day can make you feel comfortable and can it feel safe. Um, there's layers though, but there can be a, a little bit of possessiveness that you may not be aware of, or maybe you do. Um, and it's natural for Scorpio. Um, but yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. That's true. Let's see here. I'm trying to get this thing back to the first question. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right, y'all. So if you go to wooclap.com and type in Scorpio, um, we only have... We have 14 very quick questions. And you can enter your name. So create a quick username. Let's see what we got. You see one person. Just let me know if you're not playing. There's only four of y'all on, so. I think it's going to take me too long to get set up, but I'll, I'll try. No, it's all good. Take your time. So I hope that, so, that the people who are not familiar with Scorpio learned a little bit about the mystery, the magic. The, you know, the, the control and possessiveness is really just a, a decoy. It's a defense mechanism. You know, Scorpio really is actually genuinely loyal as a fixed water sign. They're, they're ride or die. Um, and they just sort of have this protective coat or several coats and layers. Uh, whenever I have a Scorpio rising sun or moon client, I don't even bother, you know, trying to break, break them in. I just say, by the time we get to the end of your session, you'll open up. And they always do, but it just takes them that build up to the comfort. They're not just right away going to tell you and talk to you. So I prefer to actually record their sessions <laughs> and send it to them. Uh, that way we don't waste time. All right, waiting on one person. Is there anyone, Marlene, is that you? Okay, no worries. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'm almost there. Go right in. Okay. All right. So which of these is not a Scorpio keyword? Select all that are not. And I'm going to go quickly now because we've got some veterans on here. 
Wait a minute, quick question. It says enter an event code. Yeah, so the, the code, code is Scorpio. Just type in Scorpio, all caps. Oh. I'm in. All right, cool. Go ahead and uh, make a quick selection and then I'll, we're going to zoom by. All right, perfect. Optimistic, talkative, and cheerful. That's absolutely true. It's very rare that you will find a talkative Scorpio unless there's other factors there. Scorpio appreciates, select all that apply. Prosperous thinking. Yeah, we're going to do prosperous thinking on the 21st. All right. Rocking and rolling. They know, they appreciate knowing your secrets when others can't recognize them, you not posting pictures of them and remaining a mystery. Absolutely. All right. The, uh, okay. The courage to say things that no one else dares. Speaking, writing, and thinking with passion. What planet would this be? Boom. Mercury and Scorpio, the messenger. Exactly. Scorpio is ruled by what planet in modern astrology? Pluto, excellent. There is magic in the fill in the blank. Prosperous. All right, the mystery, good job. Who are the, I, I, I'm curious to see who the two people were that got that right. All right, the blank house Scorpio might have snakes, lizards, or tarantulas as pets. This is the house of pets and small animals. All right, the blank house might keep their money in a hidden compartment. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to respond to a text at the same time. All right, see, waiting on two people here. All right, the second house of earned income, self-worth, possessions. This is your bag, your purse, your coins. You know Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising or stellium for 15 years, and you still never truly know them. Absolutely. All right. What is the symbol for Scorpio or symbols? You know, one person. Perfect. The Phoenix and the Scorpion, right? Scorpio is ruled by what planet in traditional astrology?
perfect mars all right a love for occult objects and tools collecting tarot decks and juju supplies what placement would collect that's the key word here All right, Venus and Scorpio. All right, Scorpio in the blank house can earn money recycling and repurposing items. The second house, so Earning money, money was the key word there. Earn money would be the second house of earned income. All right, in Scorpio rising chart, we look at these two planets as co-rulers. All right, that. And how many more questions we got left? This is the last one. You're on a first date with a Scorpio and they do what? They already ran you through a criminal case search online, tell you everything about their childhood and family. They check to see what pictures you liked on Instagram. They will ask you questions they already know the answer to to see if you'll change your story. They never ever answer with a question with a question. They're studying your behavior and mannerisms, linking it to the psychology of serial killers. What is Scorpio doing on a first date? Excellent. They, they did. They ran you through a criminal search. They check in to see what pictures you liked. And they will ask you questions you already, they already know to see if you're going to lie. And then from there, they're going to do a little more probing with you. And they're studying your behavior and mannerisms, linking it to the psychology of serial killers. All right, Raina's just joining us. Raina, I don't want to put you on a slot, but I do want to include you while we close out. Let's see who won the woo clap. Eighth house Scorpio. Oh, of course, Angela. How many points? 36 points. Oh, we actually have two first places, Ambria and Angela. Ty. I was going to guess Ambria was the other person who answered that one question, right? <laughs> I was like, I know it's her. You're right. Congratulations. Y'all got the same first place. And Marlene, you did pretty well for someone who said you didn't know much about the fourth house. Thank you. Yeah. Wait, Angela, what question were you talking about? Was it the mystery one? Yeah, it was the mystery one. I did not answer that right. I said there's a oh. mystery in the air. <laughs> <laughs> so who else I got that right? I almost did air and I was like, no, that's too easy. It's It's mystery. Who, it was who me. Got, oh, Sasha. Okay. All right. Well, good job. See y'all. You're, you're catching on. So um, just because Angela Raina just joining us, I just want to include her real quick. So Raina, Sasha, and Marlene have a midheaven in Scorpio. Uh, Raina, I know you remember a little bit from last year about the midheaven in Scorpio and what it's like. Marlene was saying people at her workplace tell her all their secrets. And I was telling them that all your, your staff, your, uh, you know, tell you every single thing about all the intricate details of their life. But as far as the the transformation in career like do you want to chime in a little bit on career transformation and or anything um I guess really hey everyone I guess I I feel like it just has been a journey to figure out my career path uh and it hasn't really like Scorpio it has not been on the surface <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a uh, it's definitely mysterious. So with this eclipse coming up here, y'all in uh, Taurus and and Scorpio, look for the houses in your chart where mm -hmm. this Scorpio Taurus axis is, because this is where there's going to be transformation. Um, Taurus, if you have a midheaven in Scorpio, that means that likely Taurus is in your fourth house. 
and Scorpio is going to be your 10th. And so there are going to be changes in your home or changes in your career. Marlene's going into a new job, a new career. Um, you know, it just, it could come up in so many ways, but eclipses are crisis and emphasis points. So there is, it's like a bridge that burns and you can never go back over it. You know, that's what happens during eclipses, just deep transformation. Um, and it will, the universe will move you, you know, when you don't move or when you don't make the moves, it'll just feel as though you were backed against the corner. But this eclipse is because of the aspects to it, it's calling for us to ask for help. If you wanted to write an ebook and you know there's someone who has written an ebook, this is a time that's just on the low, just reach out and say, hey, would you mind sharing with me resources on how you did this? If you know someone who does drop shipping, would you mind like, you know, putting me on to how you did this? Just ask because in you, letting down the, you know, Scorpio has that sort of a pride, prideful intensity, they're a fixed sign. In you releasing some of that prideful intensity, you will find that the universe is supporting you and you can be pronoia versus paranoia, you know? So that's the lesson for Scorpio. Does anyone have any questions about anything? I don't have any questions, but I did find a Scorpio in my room in my house yesterday. Mm. I mean, not Scorpio, Scorpion. And I couldn't believe that. I never seen one of them before. Dang. <laughs> I was like, what the hell? Yeah, so, you know, I want to try to resonate that with this situation right now that we're learning about it. <laughs> and, yeah. that we're in, and that we're in Scorpio season right now. Yeah, well, you, you, uh, oh, you're in the uh, Phoenix area, right? No, no. Um, Vegas, that's Arizona. right. Yeah, Las desert. Vegas, Nevada. Oh, yeah, so the desert area. So you definitely gonna get a bunch of people open their toilets and hit rattlesnakes and all that. My old boss was from Vegas. So you just never know <laughs> what you're gonna see or find in those desert areas. But um, definitely it's this eclipse uh, for you because your midheaven is actually in the 11th house. So there could be like a overhaul of like people in your life, someone got to go, you know, you might find that the eclipse is on the 19th so it can happen anywhere up to six weeks around that eclipse period and then the solar eclipse happening on december 4th you may lose a i don't even say lose a friendship may transform in your life that may lead to opportunity through that letting go of somebody that you need to let go of uh, but that's how i would look at it in your chart okay can you look at my chart now <laughs> sure she's done <laughs> she's done um, let's see. So uh, for you, we know that this is your second and eighth houses. So, you know, the eighth house of re renewal and, and transformation, like all the, the deep work that you know you've done, it's like uh, assessing that. Like, I know I've done all this work, but am I really like how much of it am I really giving myself the credit for? Because this, this eighth house is the house of, oh, we got the credit. We, we, we got the, the black card, right? And so this is the black heart of, I, I've done this work. This is a sort of nodal uh, activation for this uh, eclipse for you because you have the North Node and the South Node in Taurus and Scorpio. So this is like a, you know, you're gonna just rediscover some talents and gifts, things that feel comfortable. But the lesson when the nodes are activated is remember that every, sometimes um, what's familiar is not always the path. And then, some people have experienced their eclipse event up to a couple, like uh, two weeks ago, because we're in the eclipse season. And so whatever is from sometimes what you think is familiar may not be the path that furthers you where you need to go. That's what I would say. Does that resonate? You know, I never really say that that wasn't helpful. As I, <laughs> but I need more information. I don't know what this means. But that's like, of course, part of the Scorpio situation, right? It's like mysterious yeah. surface. So I got to do some digging, I guess. Yeah, like, you know, if there's something that you you thought you you should have done or, you, or you, you, you haven't taken care of yet or something, for example, you don't think that if something comes along like an opportunity that you need to jump right on it right away, like assess the, the other credit, assess the things that you already working with. Um, but I would just say like, if it looks too too good or if it looks a little like there could be something shady about it just let that ain't the path just let it go let it roll um yeah this, yeah, this eighth house eclipse is going to be i mean it's it's heavy for you it, it definitely financially emotionally it can feel like i feel like i'm right back where i started or i feel like i'm right 
that's just a part of the whole like changing the perception you know the four of cups card in the tarot yeah that's this this reminds me of the four of cups like you've got you've got a right behind you from out of the, the corner there's a, a cup behind you but you got to really uh, readjust your sights to see this other thing that is an opportunity but it doesn't look like it okay um, right okay thank you. yeah this eclipse it's not gonna it's not as mm-hmm. intense you don't have like a midheaven point there you I mean you do have mars it's at 27 you know degrees so you don't really have anything as close as like you know like seisha and them but for you it is going to be emotionally taxing um that's it probably already is yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> not exactly what I had in mind for my uh Sagittarius progress moon but okay <laughs> well that work I mean that I, you gotta that's what I say inventory the work you've done it's like if someone look finding their old purse and realizing they had two dollars in there and instead of being like oh there's only two dollars in here they have to go oh look at that I, there's two dollars in two there. more dollars yeah, yeah okay. exactly okay. that's what that's all it is I guess that's what I needed to say in that way um so she says people come and tell me that this is all the time at work oh he's talking about the um the midheaven in scorpio all right anyone else any questions about anything i have a question Sai. yeah um in my chart i i have um my pluto square my son and the plutos in scorpio and i notice like right now i think the sun is like conjunct my Pluto, but I noticed that a lot of people in my life are born around this time, including my son. And -hmm. I just wanted to know, like, is there a reason why I attract, I attract a lot of Scorpios, like my, my dad, my grandma, like I'm surrounded by a whole bunch of Scorpios. Mm -hmm. Well, we, uh, for one, we attract the element and the, the sign that we lack a lot of times in our life. Pluto, this is magnetism. So it would be like wherever you find like a Pluto and Scorpio, especially, it would feel magnetic, you know, like that type of person or people or energy is drawn to you. The third house is your siblings, your immediate environment. So you want to actually be surrounded by powerful mm-hmm. players and mystery, mysterious people or controlling. There was a part of you that chose that le- this lesson. You know, there's mm-hmm. a part of you that would choose these experiences in order to unpack them. Because Scorpio is that jigsaw puzzle right so that's a part of why i would say you would draw to you these powerful players okay that makes sense uh, for a lot of those to, people to okay feel protected and safe because scorpio is going to sting you to death right you want you you would want to feel to be around people who would give you the lessons of that and to also give you the experience of feeling that okay thank cool. you you're welcome so I guess we're gonna we're gonna close out. We're gonna do prosperous thinking on the twenty first. Um, this, you know, going into Sagittarius season, it's about expansion, coming out of the sewer, coming out of the heavy, murky stuff to clarity. So I assume that after this eclipse, people will have more clarity around the solar eclipse on December fourth, um, because it's even a mystery even to me. Scorpio is just it's too layered. You can't even see past the fog sometimes, um, but. That's all I have. Raina, anything you want to include and, and say? No, I can't wait to watch the video. Thanks for joining, everyone. Cool. All right, y'all. The 21st, Prosperous Thinking. Let's get to work. Thanks, Zai. Thank, right, you, thank you, Zion. Take care, Yeah, y'all. thank you. Bye. Bye.